Good morning, Bethany Christian Church. This is Pastor Greg and Judy Morris, our music minister, coming at, at you from our home in Odessa, Texas, uh, during our, our stay-at-home time, COVID-19. And uh, we are excited that you have joined with us today uh, as our Bethany family, our, uh, uh, maybe you're part of our YouTube family, or maybe part of our Facebook family, or just uh, uh, you've, you've checking us out on the website, which is... Uh, bccodessa.org and those are where uh, these videos will, are, are showed and so we're excited to have you here this great Sunday morning uh, this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it and so with that uh, now our scripture reading if you have your Bible you can turn with me to Genesis 15 verse 1 we'll be reading verses 1 through 6 and I am reading out of the Holman Christian standard. After these events, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, and your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you give me, since I am childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Abram continued, Look, you have given me no offspring, so a slave born in my house will be my heir. Now the word of the Lord came to him. This one will not be your heir. Instead, one who comes from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look at the sky, count the stars, if you're able to count them. And then he said to him, Your offspring will be that numerous. And Abraham believed the Lord and credited it to him as righteousness. Will you pray with me? Father God, Abba Daddy, we thank you for your word, for in it we learn about you and your promises. And Lord God, I lift up those who are listening. I know each of them have things that they need help in. I pray you would hold them close, that you would meet those needs. Father, that they would feel your very presence. And Father, we pray this as you taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and, and the, the power, power and, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. All right, as we continue, our, our responsive reading today is taken out of uh, Psalm 66. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what the Lord has done for me. Truly, God has listened and given heed to the words of my prayer. You are blessed. O oh God, because you have not rejected my prayer or removed your steadfast love from me. I will come into your house and pay you my vows, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God. God. Let us worship God indeed as we uh, come to the time of our communion. Many of you in, in our uh, Bethany family, Facebook family, YouTube family, and all the others. Uh, if you've uh, joined in with us before, uh, you've gotten your communion ready, but maybe maybe you uh, haven't gotten that ready. And so just pause us gently. Go get you um, whatever you have. Get you a piece of bread, cracker, whatever uh, that can symbolize the, uh, the body of Christ and, and some juice or, or, or some sort of liquid. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's so much, uh, the actual matter of those elements. It's us observing and remembering and using them in the way Christ did. Uh, so just pause us for a minute and go get those. All right. We're glad to have you back. And so, um, Jesus during the, the Passover <laughs> with his disciples, it was his last Passover and, um, before he would go to the cross. And so he took the, uh, the Passover meal and, and what he had there, just like you and I are taking what we have available to teach his disciples about what was going to happen to him. And he, and, uh, 
you know, it's it, it, when we gather, it's it's the symbols of the bread and the cup that draw us into deeper communion with one another. We are, are even though you're not physically with me, you are here in spirit as we have joined our hearts together, not just uh, our Bethany family that's watching, but with all of our Christian family worldwide. And, and uh, so all who are who are joining us in communion today, we are, you are welcome. You are welcome at the table of Christ. You are welcome into my home. You are welcome into the very presence of God as we take and use these symbols, these elements, to draw and remind ourselves of a deeper communion with Christ. And so Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. In this breaking of bread, we eat not the world uh, by the world standards. Uh, as far as what is satisfying, but rather by grace and peace and Christ's sustaining spirit. So let's partake of the bread. And then he took the cup and he gave it to his disciples saying this was his blood, uh, the bread being his body and, 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 and the, um, the blood being the, the life force and, uh, um, in the Jewish and the Hebrew culture, if you read the Old Testament, the blood represented life force and they were not to eat uh, uh, the meat that still had the blood in it and it was to be drained because that represented life and it was considered uh, sacred. And so uh, I guess they couldn't have had a, raw, uh, uh, a rare steak because it had too much blood in it. But um, So this symbolizes the blood of Christ which was shed on the cross for you and me. For it is in sharing this cup that we share the most precious gift of all, the love that Christ has poured out for us. Blessed be the remembrance of him through the taking of communion, through his body and through his blood. You know, this week has, has uh, like most weeks during our, our, our stay at home time has been, uh, an interesting week for me, and I'm sure it is for you too. Uh, I'm excited as we are going to uh, next Sunday on the 24th, we will we will be gathering together again for face-to-face -face worship at 1050 in our fellowship hall. And um, we've already uh, uh, lined out uh, the sanitizing procedure and those sort of things. We actually, we're having a, a board meeting tonight at five o'clock, so... Uh, uh, Friday evening, uh, Judy and I sanitized uh, uh, the surfaces and all that to be ready for that. And so it was kind of like a trial run to be ready for next Sunday when we all gather together at 1050. Now that will be, it won't be like we're used to. Uh, there'll be a lot of, uh, uh, we're asking that you wear your mask. We're asking you to social distance, you not shake hands. Um, we're not gonna be able to sing and that, that's, I mean, that's because that, that really um, aerates the germ. They, the, and so they're advising against singing. And we will have some music in our service, uh, but we'll have to sing in our hearts. And, uh, uh, of course, a lot of us, if we're bad singers anyway, we're kind of used to singing. I sound really good in my heart. So, so we're, we'll have to do that. Uh, but I am excited that we are going to get to come back. Uh, it won't be like before. And that's okay. What matters is that our hearts will be turned towards God as we come together. But all of this, um, working through all the puzzles of sanitizing what we can do and what we can't do and what, what we should do to protect others that we love in our family, uh, and, and, and all of this deluge of information, it's, it's really been kind of puzzling. It's, it's, and I love puzzles. I love puzzles. And uh, if you're like me, um, that puzzles has been one of the things that's helped you helped you through uh, through this time and this season. Uh, I've done several jigsaw puzzles. Uh, there's a jigsaw piece, and it, most of y'all know I love jigsaws. And and nothing's more frustrating than getting to the end and having lost a jigsaw piece. That seems to be my deal. Um, I love to do. Uh, I don't know. Do you, is any of y'all do Sudoku? I love to do Sudoku. I love this one because it's big and, and it's easy to do with my eyes. And, and uh, maybe you're a crossword fiend, you know. Uh, Dolores, if you're watching, Dolores likes, if I remember correct, likes to do the scrambles in the paper, the word scrambles. And so uh, we, we love those kind of puzzles where we're trying to piece together. And, but life can be a puzzle, can it? 
Uh, even during this time, knowing what is accurate information and what isn't accurate information, knowing what, how, how to, uh, how to uh, uh, do, do things as simple as grocery shopping it has now become uh, much more complicated. Uh, how to do this social media, how to uh, be able to tune into church. It, it's just all these different puzzles and, and all. And so I was, I was thinking about our life is an awful lot like a puzzle. And um, for me, the, the nice thing about all these books is there's always an answer deal in the back. So if I really get stuck and I can't figure it out, I can look and find the answer. But life isn't like that. It doesn't, doesn't there's not an answer book uh, other than our Bible and what God does, uh, because God is the one who knows the solution to the puzzle. And so I started thinking about that. And I thought, started thinking about our response during this time. And it, it brought me to this passage, which uh, Judy read uh, of Abram, who, who becomes Abraham. And God uh, has a special covenant with, with Abram that he promises him that he will bless him and he will, he will give him a land and he will make his, his uh, descendants as numerous as the, the, the sands uh, on the beach, which... I'd love to go to the beach when you and I, but he would make it numerous. And so in our passage, as we're reading, you kind of hear a little bit of frustration of Abram um, as he says, you know, I continue for, I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer. I'm childless and I've had to designate uh, someone else who's not even my flesh and blood, not even uh, my child to be the heir of my house, which was the custom of his day. And um, God took him out. God, who is described here as his, who has told Abram that he will be your shield and your reward and, and it will be great because God will, God will be great. And so God takes him out into, this, uh, into the field and shows him the sky. And so as we look at this passage, I want to draw, as has been my custom during this time, three observations for us to look at and for me to leave with you. <coughs> Number one, yes, uh, that God's promise to Abram or Abraham was puzzling. It was puzzling uh, because he could not see the solution right away. And as hard as he worked at it, he couldn't in his own means come up with what needed to happen due to his circumstances. He was old. Um, he was much older than I am. He was, he was old and his wife was way beyond childbearing years. And, and so he was old and childless and yet God's, the key element uh, of God's promise was that he would have children. And this was, this was an extreme puzzle. If this was just, you know, um, kind of confounding, probably frustrating for him. Uh, there was no obvious number. There was no obvious man-made solution to, to Abram's puzzling promise that he received from, from God. Because the solution to the puzzle did not seem obvious, some might have thought it appeared to be a lie. Maybe uh, some of Abram's friends, as he shared that, would say, that's stupid. There's no way that can happen. That's a lie. You're being lied to. You're being misled. Uh, many of us today, as we have placed our faith in, in Christ and in God, and uh, we, we don't necessarily have all the answers for everything. The world is quick to say because they don't see the initial solution to the puzzle. They're quick to say, you are believing a lie. You are believing a lie. But see, we have to hold strong to our faith. We don't have to, we have to hold strong to what God has told us because God is in control even now in this time. God is in charge far beyond what the world is and what the world says. The world can't seem to make up its mind from one moment to the next, what is correct and what is not, okay? The world believes uh, things and then it changes with, with, with the direction of the wind, but God is steadfast. And so if God, if God has told us that, then we need to hold fast to that, even though we don't see the solution off the bat. So God's promise to Abraham or Abram was puzzling. Later on, God renames him Abraham. It was puzzling. God's promise to you, God's promise to me, God's promise to all who have accepted Christ, those of us who are Christ followers, disciples of Christ, God's promise in our journey can be puzzling. And you know, it's really interesting, just like any of these puzzles, once you've done it all and you've got all the solution, then you look back 
And the solution is obvious, isn't it? The solution is great. It's wonderful. It's the same way in our life and our walk with, with God. And so uh, God's promise, observation number one, God's promise was puzzling and is puzzling. B, God's promise is his covenant. It's his special relationship. God's promise, the promise embodied in, in what he told Abram and in what he has told us is that God's promise may seem puzzling, but God promises not only just the puzzle, but he promises the solution. Okay, God communicates it. He, in, in talking with, with Abram, it says that he comes to Abram in a vision. And so God communicates uh, his will and his desire to be in relationship with with Abram through vision and through talking to him and he speaks to us today through his word, the Bible and through through our prayer life and through those sort of things. So God God is in communication with us and it says, I, I love this part of the passage today that it says that God is our shield. He is our shield and that's, that's our idea of something that will protect us. Many of us go out we go out with our, 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 our face mask. Our face mask is a shield, not only just to protect us from those germs coming our way, but to protect others from any germs that we might be sending. It's a two-way shield. God is our shield, and, and he will be our reward. God's, God is our great reward. Our relationship, the fact that we are able to come into his presence, we're able to pour out our heart in prayer, we're able to share our life, we're able to call and cry upon him, ask for his intervention, ask for his protection. God, and the fact that we're able to know him on an intimate, personal relationship, we don't have to go through any intermediary, uh, any other, uh, to, to get to God. We don't have to go through a bunch of uh, uh, set rules and regulations. We just can can go to God and cry out to him in our heart through through our relationship with Jesus Christ. God is our great reward. But not only that, God seeks to help us understand, okay? God seeks to help us understand. God provides an example. And so here's Abraham, Abram struggling with this and God has already made this covenant with him, but, but God is patient. And he takes Abram out into the night sky and he says, look up at all those stars. Can you count them? You know, sometimes I think we need to pause and realize we're not the biggest creature in the neighborhood. We're not the biggest thing on the block. It's not all about us. See, God's creation is very humbling. And so he says, Abram, can you count all those stars? And Abram's like, well, no, there's no way. Um, and, and there's still no way to count all the stars in our universe. And yet God says, your descendants, Abram, will be as plentiful as that. And God promises us as, as, as Christians today that we are in relationship with him. And maybe he takes us out and says, look at all those stars. The blessings I would have for you are as numerous as the stars. If you will just turn your life over to me, if you'll just follow me, if you'll just seek me, if you'll let me uh, guide you if you'll let me share the solution to the problem. See, the promised future was the outnumbering of the scars, our, uh, of the stars. Our, our promised solution is that ultimately when we die, we don't have to fear death. death. There's a lot of struggle with the COVID-19 and, and all that. And, and no, I don't want to die. Like, you know, but the thing is, I don't have to fear death. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen because I have the assurance that I will spend eternity uh, with God, with Christ, the place that he has prepared for me. And God's followers, us uh, and those of Abraham's descendants that have followed him and looked to him, uh, all who look to, to God, uh, all are welcome in the kingdom of God. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to have a certain uh, skin color. You don't have to have a certain uh, socioeconomic status. You don't have to have a certain popularity. You don't have to earn God's love. It has already been given and freely expressed through the sacrifice of the cross and what Christ did on it. So God's great promise. So what's the third observation in this passage that I want to draw as, as we close? Is the response of Abraham. Our response. And it says here that um, and he brought him outside and said, look towards the, the heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. 
and he believed the Lord. Well, who, who believed the Lord? And he believed the Lord. Abram believed the Lord. Abram believed the Lord. That's our response to God's promise, is to believe. That's our response in faith. That's our response in love. That's our response. If any work, if there's any work of salvation, it's the work of belief. Despite what the world may say, I believe. Okay? Despite what somebody else's opinion about Christ may be, I believe. About Despite what other people believe uh, as to whether uh, the church is relevant in our world or not, I believe that God has chosen it. I believe that God is not done. I believe that God is doing a great work during this time. And what happened? And it says, he counted it to him as righteousness. Now the he there, I, as I'm looking at scripture and interpreting scripture, that he is God. And he, God, counted it to who? Abram as righteousness. Abram was a man of sin like you and me. But because he believed God, and he believed what God told him, God counted it as righteousness. We don't earn righteousness. It's not by the number of deeds we do, although we, we're admonished in scripture to love and show mercy by, by uh, doing deeds and helping those that are less off than we are. These are acts of love, not acts of deeds to earn salvation or to earn righteousness. The deed that earns us righteousness is belief to place our faith in Jesus Christ. Abram believed Abram worked his part of the puzzle um, and it was counted as righteousness. He received the unmerited gift of righteousness. It was counted to him by God. It was, it was accounted to him. It was imputed. It was, it was attributed to him as righteousness. Our belief gains the favor of God. You know, a lot of you ask, well, what does God want from me? What does God, uh, God want? Well, does he want this or does he want that? No, God wants you to believe him when he says that he loves you. God wants, him, wants you to believe him when he says that he will be your shield and your protector and he will bless you. He wants you to believe him when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross as a payment, as an atonement for the sin we have in our life. So in believing and asking that the work of Christ be attributed to our life, to be counted to our life, we are saved. We become followers of Christ. Key point today, in closing, our world, our era that we live in, our life is a great big puzzle, isn't it? But God has promised that there is a solution to the puzzle, and he's already worked a big portion of that. And we look forward to that time when, when Christ comes again to complete the puzzle uh, of, of our world. We are not responsible or we're, and we're definitely not in control of what happens. I think if anything we learned during COVID-19 is we've learned that, you know, mankind's not as in, big, as in control of everything as we think we are. Okay. We're not as in control of everything and we can't make everything right. We can't make, okay, but we can turn it over and we can believe God, okay? So we are not responsible or in control uh, of what God, uh, of what happens, but God is able to work, scripture tells us, God is able to work all things together for those who what? Believe in him. The bad, the good, there may, we may not be able, we may be like Abram who says, I'm childless. How am I going to have a bunch of, a bunch of children? But I'll believe you. We may, hey, I've had this horrible, bad thing. I've lost my job during this time. I've lost my business during this time. I've lost all my money during this time. Somebody hacked all my stuff. Somebody did this. I've lost it all. How can God work good through this? Okay. And sometimes I wonder Maybe God can't work good from it because we're too busy grasping onto it and holding it rather than letting it go into God's plan, letting it go into him, the great puzzle master uh, who will uh, ultimately work us towards the solution that, that works best for us in our life. So what is our response? It's the ABCs of salvation. We're to admit that we're not in control, that we sin, and that we need a God. 
We're to believe that Jesus Christ paid the price for those sins and our shortcomings and that he offers it to us so that we believe Christ is our, our savior and we're to commit to him as our Lord, to become Christ followers. We're to commit to him that we will work our puzzle at the guidance and direction of God in each and every aspect of that. So our challenge this week, I've been leaving you with some challenges lately. Last week, it was what, what amount of widow's might, as we looked at the widow's might, I challenged you, what amount of widow's might of service would you uh, spend for God's kingdom that w- would you put into God's kingdom? Our challenge this week is where in your life's puzzle, wait, let me get my puzzle piece. Where in your life's puzzle are you allowing God to enter his solutions? God's not going to force his solutions into your life. God's not going to force his will on you. He gives you free will. But you can activate God. You can, you can allow God to be much more involved than he is in helping you find where this piece fits in the puzzle. If God is not a part of the solution in your puzzle, maybe that's why your life is so frustratingly puzzling. If God is not a part of the solution in your puzzle, maybe that's why you hate puzzles or you hate your life or you hate frustration or you hate being out of control because you have placed your dependence on something other than God. We are to be dependent upon God. And so those are my observations as I've thought about, as I've been puzzling this week over things. And I've thought about uh, this passage where Abram shows us how to have righteousness uh, by believing God. So I want to close with a few other comments. And I kind of mentioned this earlier. I do want to thank everyone for their continued faithfulness and giving of offerings and dropping off their offerings, uh, mailing them or dropping them off at at the... uh, mail slot at church, or maybe they've given online or or, or the various ways that we have. Uh, I want to thank you for your faithfulness in checking our elders and our leaders and and, and members of our church and checking on one another and and seeing to any needs that that we may have there so that we're, 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 even though we're a little disjointed at this time and maybe isolated, we're really not as isolated as we may think we are. I want to thank you for checking on one another, for loving each other. Um, so anyway, I, I'm excited that, that we have done, done well during this time and that God continues to use us in this puzzling time. Uh, but this, Sunday, this evening at 5 o'clock, this Sunday, at 5 o'clock is our board meeting, okay? And, and we're having our board meeting uh, before we have our face-to-face, which is uh, next Sunday on the 24th. Our board meeting will be at 5 o'clock. It's not going to be your typical board meeting. I'm going to kind of give you an up-to-date on all the, all the things that have happened since our last meeting, uh, which was in March, and, and try and uh, bring everybody up to, up to speed so that we all know the game plan and we're all on board uh, as we slowly reopen. We're not throwing the doors open for everything. We are just going to do worship, and, and I wanna, we'll talk about sanitation procedures and, and all of those sort of things. Uh, we're encouraging people, if you are are, are 65 or older and you don't feel comfortable and you don't, don't worry about that. We will have a video next week. Uh, we'll, we'll record one and we'll post it next week. And then after that, we'll post the service one. We're going to make them in the service in a delayed manner. Okay. And so uh, you will still be part of us, whether you're, uh, whether you worship with us in Fellowship Hall or you worship uh, with us here. And so we're excited about that. May 23rd, next Saturday at two o'clock, we had a couple individuals uh, sign up to help us sanitize and and, um, we sanitized for this evening, uh, Judy and I did, and we kind of did it so that we would work through all the details of everything that needed to be done and so that we can develop a checklist so that when we have volunteers next week, uh, Saturday at two o'clock, we can put them to work in, in an organized manner. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of volunteers, uh, and so if you are uh, willing, uh, please contact me. Uh, give me a call or, or text me is the best way to do that, and, and so we'll, we'll sign up volunteers. You know, and this will be on a weekly basis, so if you can't do it 
this week, we may put you on the team that does it the, the week after that. So remember, mark your calendar, check your watches, mark your Google watch, check your, your back calendar, synchronize your watches, or whatever it takes. If you want to come and join with us, May 24th. Now we only have a limited number of people that can be there. And so uh, um, we're looking for, you know, we, we have been running around 50 or 60 in worship. We're looking for about, uh, we're about a third of that. And it would be good because we have to, we have to have the social distancing and all of that. So uh, if you, if you wake up and you rolled over and, and went to sleep, don't feel guilty. Okay. And so you can tune in to us on, on this video. So with that said, also make sure that you work, bring your mask, wear your masks. Uh, if you don't have a mask, I'm, I've got uh, somebody, uh, a limited quantity of, of some that I'll have available that Sunday morning. And so uh, come, uh, be prepared, uh, pray, pray about, be prepared uh, as we come into one another's presence. So we're gonna close uh, with this word of blessing. Father God, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, Blessed Trinity, help us to learn what it means to be called your people. Fill us with zeal for the fulfillment of your commandments and the application of your word, the Bible, to our lives. Give us endurance and patience when the waters of life are troubled, when they are puzzling. May we tread bravely and boldly in the way of the cross. Hide not yourself from us, but accept our repentance through Jesus Christ. Fill us anew with the promise that he lived and he died so that we can proclaim him. May we live in your eternal glory. Amen. Bethany Christian Church, we love you. Go in peace. And we look forward to those that are going to join us next Sunday at 1050, the 24th, either in Fellowship Hall or over the internet. Blessings.